כעת אני מקווה שלכולכם הייתה הזדמנות בתקופה של הכנס להתבונן בחידושים במרכז הבינתחומי ובשינוי הנוף יחסית לשנה שעברה ואני שמח להזמין את הנשיא המייסד והמוציא לפועל של כל השינויים שראיתם כאן ושל הפר דיל גם שהוא קיבל מבנט לדוקטורטים ולאוניברסיטה פרטית פרופסור אוריאל רייכמן לפרופסור אוריאל רייכמן, הנשיא דיאל שלום לכולם. ערב טוב. אני רוצה... לקדם בברכה like to את רב אלוף מילואים גדי איזנקוט, שהוא נכנס למחזור הראשון של דוקטורי כבוד במרכז הבינתחומי, אני, הדבר מבטא הערכה גדולה מאוד לפועלו ולתרומתו למדינת ישראל. I would like also to mention General Inventor Gilad, who was here in the last year of the mention Amos Gilad, General in Reserves Amos Gilad. He really gave us a fantastic conference while working in quite hard conditions, while taking advantage of the encouragement he gets from the entire world. Thank you wholeheartedly. חוסנה של מדינת ישראל מחייב מסגרת של הסכמות ערכיות בסיסיות כתנאי לשימור יחד לאומי שיעמוד גם בתקופה של חילוקי דעות. באתי לטעון היום שהיה לנו בסיס כזה ושמו הכרזת העצמאות. מסמך מכונן וחיוני זה נוטרל בגין קריאה לחרדי. פתחה את הקרב ופתחה את הקרב ופתחה את הקרב ופתחה את הקרב. without being dragged to rhetorics of elections. בעקבות החלטת האו"ם, המתחילה בינתיים מחרבים את ישראל על הג'יהאד הקדוש והמלחמה הציונית הראשונה. בתוך הקרב הציוני 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 that followed uh, the combatants in this vicious war. Had we been defeated, this might have been the end of the Jewish people. After the Holocaust, it would have been, in fact, the last battle. The declaration of independence does not reflect only a liberation war. This was the second document in its importance in the history of the Jewish people after the Ten Commandments. The caste of the Jewish slaves was organized in Egypt by Moses, who led them to rebel against their fate and take them to the land of their forefathers. The Zionist revolution, led by Herzl, did the unbelievable, the unprecedented in our history when it led a very persecuted people with the blood shed throughout the 2,000 years of exile and brought it back to its historical homeland. Some of the people there rebelled. They wanted to go back to the reality of slavery in Egypt, but the Zionist movement also had the opposition of Haredi movement who helped for the help of God in order to regain redemption. The Declaration of Independence 
independence reflects the values of Zionism. The movement was born out of the Enlightenment movement and it enabled a breakthrough into the elite of the Western society and together with the exposure to Enlightenment and the many people rebelled against the totality of uh, the Halakha and the rabbis, but they continued to see themselves as members of the Jewish people, faithful to a historical past, culture, and values. For them, the main bulk of Judaism was the national identity, faithfulness to Hebrew, to the state, to human values and traditions. Their perception of Jews as a nation was in the basis of national activism that both practically and diplomatically brought back people to settle this country and a national recognition. And following the Zionist doctrine, the Declaration of Independence reflects the fact that we want to be a free people in our country, equal equality to all. The Declaration of Independence reflects the striving to an exemplary society and also to the basic principles that we all know that are in the Declaration. The State of Israel is going to be open for Jewish aliyah and gathering of the exiles, developing the country for the benefit of all its citizens, based on the principles of liberty and justice in the vision of the prophets and have complete equality for all its citizens without any difference of religion, creed, gender, and it will be the education and culture and also maintain the holy sites. The declaration about the establishment of the Jewish state includes the values of this country, and the declaration was signed by the representatives of all the parties in Israel. The values were perceived as valid, and the declaration about the mere fact of the establishment of the state. To the law of creating the country, there were a few bills that were um, submitted at the time, and all of them had the determination that the state of Israel is the national state of the Jewish people. There were the uh, basic uh, sovereignties of uh, the Jewish people, and it was explicitly um, bound by the principles. I thought that, that the law was uh, superfluous, but we could have seen in those uh, builds of the national law uh, strengthening to the Declaration of the Independence. But the last minute towards the vote, out of that law was deleted any relation to the Declaration of Independence. The national law as a law became a law, whereas the Declaration was just sitting there without any legal status. The Declaration of the Independence that was a basis for national agreement was deleted from its role and it became just a museum uh, object. And the difficulty of that was that the basic law that defines the essence of the national state of the Jewish people adopts only the symbolic side of the state but ignores the essence, the values, uh, the moral of the country. And so there is no real supervision on any violation of the principles of the declaration and only the national message was left. So what happened actually? In the very short time between the bill of the national law and its uh, enactment, the facts are not disputable. In order to pass the law by 61 majority, the Likud went to the Haredi parties, and their agreement was conditioned in deleting the relation to the de Declaration of Independence. Who did this serve? What about this deletion? Who did it serve? The the deletion of the, the scroll. First of all, the Haredi party, they are reserved from the declaration because it doesn't say that the regime of the State of Israel will be based on the Laura, Tor, Torah laws and all the religious uh, uh, elements in the life. It also against the fact that it doesn't 
actually mentioned the name of God Almighty by deleting that this is a victory of the perception of the Haredi world, although the national law does not give back the dominance to the Haredi world, but it does delete its uh, free and liberal and e equality nature. And uh, we saw the reservation of the Haredi historically to the state and to the Zionist movement. Another group that definitely benefits from that deletion is the Messianic Jews. These people together with the rabbis who sit on the seam line is trying to undermine the Zionist narrative by creating another narrative. The return to Zion is a religious phenomenon. It was not obtained by the narrative that I said, the Zionist one. As opposed to the Haredi, who see in Zionism a secular uh, phenomenon, and the Messianic think it's the act of God. Whether they see the Zionist as heretics uh, and uh, the faith in the national religion, that one. And in the final version of the national law, there's a determination that the Jewish people is uh, eligible to the define itself as a religious country. And after the enactment of the law, not surprisingly, uh, the M.K. Smutrich saw himself justifiably so as uh, uh, justified to ask to form here a halachic state. And apparently the law does not negate such a step. Now we have to ask, how come the Prime Minister agreed, and I have appreciation to him because of his political achievements and all the others, so how come? How did he agree to pass the law without mentioning the principles of the declaration? But apparently the Prime Minister saw importance to pass the national law in this way, and this way we could have, he could have appeared in the elections when the could represent the national um, camp and their left uh, did not. And this succeeded in the media. But the absurdity is that agreeing with the camp that is against the Zionism was presented as a national step, whereas those who, who supported the scroll of the independence were defined as objectors. Of course, the Prime Minister understood that, but had he been a responsible leader, he would try to look for a consensus beyond the narrow political interest when we talk about the definition of a national state. This is a manipulation, hypocrisy. Uh, Similar question. A similar question has to be addressed to the former Minister of Justice, Ayelet Shaked, on the 29th of August 2017. In the conference of uh, opening the uh, conference of the bar, she said, and I quote, my wish is to see Israel as a strong national state. And together with that, giving all the rights of individuals that it compels itself to in the scroll of independence, which is the groundbreaking document for everybody, Jews, Muslims, Druze, Christians. And because of this duty, she continued to say, the minister, there isn't and cannot be a political controversy. The bill of the national law that Ayelet Chaket submitted together with Yariv Levin and others did include the referral to the scroll of independence. How come it disappeared? What happened? How come the support of Ayelet Shaked drove to the deletion of that most important document of our nation? How did it disappear? One has to say the truth. Bad spirit has been now hovering above us. One that changes the values of the state of Israel. The na nation law I would say blatantly detached itself from the national credo on which our illustrious Zionist past was built. We are now going in the wrong direction. Democracies die slowly. This process is usually on waves of nationalisms and religious radicalism. Turkey, Poland, Hungary are preceding us. We're still not there. However, we are already marching towards their path.
The most uh, significant beginning in those countries was the, the perception of the majority in the parliament or the Knesset, and that is the real essence of democracy. This will, in their perception, compels all the authorities of the country. And therefore, in these countries, they decided to go against anybody who dares to object against anything that they call the will of the people because it disturbs, so to so speak, to the government to rule. And actually what happened in these three countries, jeopardizing the courts, the constitution, and even controlling them because uh, the leadership of uh, doing away with the gatekeepers, but using the police and the Shabak and the Mossad, and of course replacing the military commanders. The public co uh, media became as a propaganda tool for the government, and regulation system as opposed to God, what they call the national freedom of speech. Organizations and NGOs and study um, organization became part of the control of the government and they ruled the monies that come to these organizations. In Hungary, the new constitution says that on the shoulders of the state is the duty to defend the Christian culture of Hungary. In Poland, all the rules of elections were based in order to win over the democracies. It's important to mention that all these changes and everything that happened in these countries came step after step from all the legitimate so-called uh, constitution. This development is, sounds very familiar because uh, now the we feel the same thing here, and we have to tell the truth. Without any checks and balances, we and our children are going to live in a different world, a world without freedom, a world of imposition. The state of Israel will not be an exemplary state and will not reflect the dream that we dreamed all our lives. In Israel, too, they preach to the public that the laws of the Knesset are the will of the people. And in the coalition method, the Knesset doesn't determine anything. It just uh, does what the government tells and the government is controlled many times by a minority group, sometimes very radical, of ministers. And here in Israel, apparently even the majority needs defense. We should uh, look into the rhetorics of the government now and the changing reality and we'll say a few words about the national religious connection. Here we attack uh, the uh, High Court of Appeal that it's not good enough. They say that it shouldn't have any authority to uh, disqualify rules of the Knesset and to give uh, power to the government not to respect the decisions of the court if they look too radical. Some people demand that there'll be um, with, um, a clause of uh, overriding in a majority of 61 mem case. There's a system of delegitimation of the gatekeepers, the police, the um, attorney general, and all sorts of bills to change uh, the way to elect uh, the judges and to reduce their power and to put borders. We went through legislation to limit the rights of the people. The government already managed to control the public uh, media. And we already experienced the reality of cultural commissars. Where does it come, all these things, to us? Some of it derives from jeopardizing the principle that legislation is not there in order to advance personal advancement. Such legislation, they said, should come because of the campaign to exonerate the prime minister. But in the deeper sense, the Haredi um, intentions came up. Even a great rabbi like Ovadia yourself, he was considered moderate in the past. He blatantly went against the Supreme Court because he said at the time that the Supreme Court is not an elected, they know nothing about the Jewish history, and he's going to give us all the disasters of the world. There's also a movement of the autonomy of the Haredi Ashkenazi community, and they want civil justice, and then the Messianic uh, 
uh, movement also warms the engines of that uh, doctrine. According to the Haredi world, democracy is only majority rule. They will accept the majority rule because, so that controversies will go to the benefit of the public. They do not accept any judicial constitutional uh, justice. They say that injustice is only one thing for Israel, and that is the rules of the Torah. And this um, opinion today is adopted by activists in order to make coalitions and trade in votes. When uh, the Minister Derry's appeal was rejected, uh, some of his uh, supporters tried to actually break into the Supreme Court. And after that, there was a huge demonstration of tens of thousands of Haredi near, near the courts. At the time, I was afraid that there was going to be another breakthrough, that 7,000 people uh, with convening in Jerusalem. And I said to the people, if they they're going to break into the Supreme Court. We are going to defend it with our bodies. The Haredi just uh, were standing there and praying. But we also folded our flags. We're not going to hesitate to rebrandish them in order to defend the Israeli democracy and the courts. My whole life I saw in the Declaration of Independence a reflection of the Israeli covenant to the definition of the things that are common. When I established the IDC, I saw in it a Zionist university. We are going to remain faithful to our way. We are going to tell the truth. And we call today to enact a basic law with one sentence, and I quote, the Declaration of Independence in 1948 is a basic law. Let us vote only to parties who commit themselves to pass this law. If we want and if we demand it, it will be fulfilled. Today, I say today, we still haven't lost our hope. We didn't lose our hope to continue to be people free in their country.